look, look, look. This is a whole different type of segment. This one, this one is going to be for my people. You know what I'm saying? I got to say, pardon the bareness, but I'm on a personal journey right now. I need to re-embrace fitness, man. I know a lot of y'all know me from fitness. I used to play football. I used to be fit. I used to have packs and all that. So I've been actually embracing, like, looking at myself so I can... I don't know. I do the self-shaming when it comes to my physique, for real, because that's something I, that's in my control. That I like, you know what I'm saying. So, um, and then just like I've literally gotten real life awards for my physique, like high school, Best Buy, like even in elementary, I did the like elementary versus ele- elementary kids doing pull-ups, push-ups, and sit-ups, and so like always been fit. So like, but like the last like eight years, man, I just. You know how it is, man, with the working out, but not to get into that. I ran into this. I watch a lot of stuff on the internet. Watch a lot of stuff on the internet. You know, a lot about this channel is from me to you. Like, uh, interesting. I personally am, I don't know if infatuated is the word, but like, I am really, 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 really into gang culture. I'm like fascinated with it because me personally, like, it was never really an option for me. I don't like following orders. And I know a lot about gangs. It's like, if somebody say do something or put in work, you got to do it. Like, I learned, we had D.A.R.E. I had D.A.R.E. back in the day. Elementary. <clears throat> Actually, where I learned about drugs. Even though I was living in the projects, never seen drugs, saw the effect of drugs. Definitely could identify a crackhead. But didn't didn't ever see no drugs. Like, didn't. And there, I saw drugs. They taught me what every drug was. They even was hip to amphetamines before all this meth stuff. So, all right, that was a long tangent, but, like, this is going to be kind of a longer video. Y'all seem to like kind of the story stuff, so I don't mind doing the longer videos. Y'all actually watch through the videos. I appreciate that. I love y'all for that. But, um, man, I got to see if I can get a pause. Okay, so personal history lesson. I know I got a lot of new subscribers, but just so y'all can... Get to know me a little better. Like, I'm from Cleveland, down the way, projects, grew up in King Kennedy mostly, but got family in all the projects, which is, was a fun dynamic growing up, having to be in all the projects, but being from a projects, but not banging or repping the set in that sense. Like, I never was a gang banger, but I got a lot of pride from the projects I'm from. Like, originally the Blues, they tore that down, but um, even after I left out the Jets, my mom, my mom was a uh, part in this. I don't even know how y'all gonna take it. My mom's a hood rat. She loved a hood, not a hood rat in the sense that how y'all think of it with the being a slut. But like my mom loved a hood. Like even when we moved out the hood after school, we would. She didn't even have a car yet. We would walk to the Jets from Seventy Second and Saint Clair to down the way somewhere in the Jets. Like she, my mom just loved being in the hood. But uh, the projects was different for her growing up back then, especially she was first generation desegregation and community like community was different for them back then like the jets was not what i had grown to know with people all on wet getting butt naked fighting and the crackheads the crackheads was the crackheads the crackheads the crackheads was everywhere crackheads was a normal day for a crackhead to wipe your windshield and breaking your car later that day <laughs> Crackheads was a real thing for me growing up. Crackheads was a very real thing, but, um, man, hold on, I need another pause. <laughs> I guess that kind of go into physique, too, but, like, yeah, so, pardon the bareness. I got to get my physique together, so I got to look at myself and be like, dog, you got to do better, and then I got to look at myself and envision what I want it to look like, and then I got to go do it, so that's what I'm in the middle process of doing. I'm going to start working out one day, and I don't like it, but... This, I'm going to let this play a lot because he touched on some stuff that it hit home. Some some of this stuff hit home. Real life street stars. You know what time it is. Everybody start clapping right now. Real street legend in the building. Kryptonite. What it is, bro? We're in the building, man. What's going down? Real life street stars, man. I don't... Yo, and listen. Real Life Productions, don't you flag me. I'm a little channel. I'm a little channel. I'm just trying to get some of your clout because you got an interview I can't get. 
But, uh, dude name is Kryptonite, bruh. I'm assuming he a Crypt. But how you a Crypt and your name Kryptonite? I need more details. Made it. Hey, Legendary man. Blue Couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I've never been a gang member. I actually got cousins who are gang members and they rep the blue set, but, um, they love blue. Which is crazy because, like, if I were to pick a gang, if I decided to do gang things since little, it would have been blue. But the blue gang don't like navy blue. I don't know. Maybe they do, but I always see them in royal blue. I like navy blue, so I would have needed to be in a navy blue gang. That would have had to be a criteria for me. Not joining a gang if you ain't even wearing the same blue that I like the most. You know what I'm saying? So. Did you coordinate the fit with the couch? Listen, ain't no doubt about it. Big crib night in the building. It gotta be blue, man. If the, yeah. couch, if the couch was red. I've even seen some of these members of this faction have blue, Santa Claus wearing blue, which I do think is a cooler Santa Claus. Google blue Santa Claus. Listen, it would have been destroyed. I would have sat on it. I would have sat on it. It would have broke. It would have broke. You know what I'm saying? Wait, so I want to preface something because we had a guy named Blue Hands in here, man. Shout out King Shoe. Shout out King Shoe. I'm going to fast forward a lot of this because I want them to get into this. They're going to talk about um, the movie Boys in the Hood, which I think is an interesting movie that I think it do a good job of showcasing the hood, like black communities, when you think of urban, when you think of where gangs might be, it do a good job of showcasing like the whole, he gonna get into it, but it do show like, the dude that like, even though homie didn't have both parents in the house, he had both parents, you know what I'm saying, co-parenting like y'all like to say. When he came through, man, he, you know, we talking about, you know, his time frame and uh, he, we talked about a name, Kryptonite. Kryptonite. And we had to stay right there. I'm like, wait a minute. You had a, there was a nigga named Kryptonite in prison? I'm in the building. I'm you like, yeah, to we, him. I'm sorry. Y'all know I, I refrain on these social sites from saying that word. But part of gang culture is that word. So you're going to learn today. Got him in the building, man. Kryptonite. So before we even get started, man, uh, you know, just go, based on that interview, the name Kryptonite, because that's just a throw name in general. Yeah, just for, for a crib and have <laughs> Nah, it, it's that, man. It, it, it's definitely because of gang, being young. You know, when I was a boy, they gave me that name because I was the type of person that, to get stuff done. You, you know, so so when you think of kryptonite, it's like you can destroy something strong, right? Correct. But it, 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 it was for my ability to think. Like It's often like when I come across these interviews and stuff, because like, to be honest, like I don't know... I do know why I never chose to get into, like, gang... Well, for I told y'all about gang culture. I don't like following rules. And then for two, like, with just crime, my conscience, I can't do it. Like, gotta be on me. Like, because, like, I'm telling you, I said, I probably said this in previous videos. Like, I had a choice growing up. I remember specifically in my youth growing up, it was a point where we'd be out on the playground and everybody wasn't there no more. And it wasn't because they was dead. It was just they was doing different things. And then people would talk and, yeah, so so-and-so ain't coming through no more. Like, we just trying to literally play football, play basketball. So-and-so ain't coming around no more because so-and-so getting them to pack for the nothing. And that's all profit. Like, like, and you would hear these things, like, and I'm like, but damn, we wouldn't lose if homie was out here. I'm, I'm not... Shout out to moms and my dad for me not feeling like I needed the streets or wanting the streets. But, like, I was just trying to compete. You know what I'm saying? Do boy stuff, play. But it was it was other homies who had they had different situations. So, I never knock nobody for choosing the street life. I just be like, you still got to be ethical about that. Like, you can't be cutting throat people that look out for... Like, I don't know. Like, it, it's a tangle web. Like, when you... When you grow where we grow up and you witness some of these things. Hey, I'm going to figure it out. Put it on me. Where everybody else can stop, put it on me. I'm going to make it happen. So that's the name that my comrades that I grew up with. 
Yeah, so, like, not that I have the same name as him, but, like, that's a, how I got a lot of my respect and things. Because, like, people knew that I was confined by, I'm not about to do no crimes, but it was still other stuff to do. But, like, they always respected my mind, like, how I thought about stuff. And then I was very physically able to do things that, like, they couldn't think about doing because they weren't physically able to jump as far, jump as high, even though I was a little dude. So, but... Yeah, like, as far as, like, I was known for responsibility since little, because that's what I was doing. I had a key to the house at 10. Like, y'all, y'all, I don't know, like, I don't know how y'all living, but I got stuff to do. I got a little brother to look after. I got a house to look after. Like, I don't know if y'all, like, I was I was at the house with little bro, like, and there's people jingling at the back door. Ain't nothing between them and the house but me. And my little brother. And I got to make sure he good. Like. It probably would have been easier if I would have joined the gang. But I just couldn't do it. Like if I would had a gang and knew I had people to call. To the, but like no that wouldn't. I didn't think that was right. Not a prison name. Right. I got that name from my comrades that I grew up with in the projects. From Cedar Ted Projects. They gave me that name. Give us a little introduction of um, you know your upbringing and then how you got introduced to gang culture? Well, it's like pretty much with everybody's story, man. In, in the black community, we got plagued with crack and gangs, right? And so I grew up in a time where I saw crack come about. You know, one year, I don't know what crack is. The next year, everybody talking about crack. By the time I was born and a living adult, I knew about crack. Knew about crack, bro. I ain't gonna front. I knew about crack. You know what I'm saying? And then right behind that, gangs is ushered into the community. And, and in every community here in Dallas, everywhere else, you have local gangs, mm -hmm. local dance groups, local, you know, competitions. Kind of like what the kids got now with the drill, mm -hmm. you know. But in our time, movies like Colors turned these local gangs into like murdering machines. Colors gave us instructions and our identity. You, you see what I'm saying? What was your movie that kind of just really, just as a young adolescent mind, that just really made you be like, nigga? The hardest movie ever that spoke to me and spoke to our culture was Boys in the Hood. Yeah, oh, yeah. How was that? Because, because it showed it from all aspects. Who did you cater to? And it feel, who did you feel like you were more like when you watched that movie? And Boys in the Hood? Yeah. And that Don't. time, listen, in that time. Pardon the interruption. I had to hit up the missus and I had to pause this video to make sure I don't get copyright strike. Now, is y'all hearing the impact of, like, they literally was talking about the movies. I don't know. I might be ahead of it because I saw the first five, ten minutes, but um, my dad and them was in gangs, but it wasn't in, like, what you think. Like, it wasn't, like, the gangs that we think of today. It was, like, they boys, they partners, like, four or five dudes. They probably all went to school with, and they had each other back. And they actually grew up in racial times, so they actually had each other back. So, like, even versus police, like, in a lot of sense. Like, but I tell like, I was cracking up the other day. I was telling my coworkers, like, my dad and them, like, when they was older and they felt tension with another dude, with some other dudes, they start pop locking. That's so much love. I pray, look. <laughs> I would love for an environment where people fought, felt tension with people and then a dance a dance battle broke out. Other than these clips that they pulling, extendos, they calling them penises now. It's getting out of control. I'm sorry I wasn't cammed up. I wish y'all saw my face. They calling them penises now when they got the extendo clip in the gun. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. Uh, I was, uh, you were dope I was, I was oh, yeah, dope boy. Yeah. Everybody was dope boy. But now, let's See, I would have got out the car, you know No, what I mean? no. That, there we go. Now listen. No, now listen. I'm glad we, we, we right there, right? I got something for you and the artist. Listen. Yeah. Um, Boys in the Hood is the greatest black movie ever made to tell our experience. Okay. In that movie, John Singer put a nugget in there that we all missed, right? It is great to tell our experience. It is great to tell our experience. And it was interesting because they didn't talk nothing about school. They just talked about the community. The most gangstest part in that movie, right? Anybody got a gangster scene from Boys in the Hood? Can can anybody give me one? Any one of y'all? Uh, when, uh, when they shot Ricky, when they shot Ricky in the back. When they when they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when they shot Ricky in the back, what you say? 
But no, I'm just saying, what, what, what you say? When he when he walked him down at the in the Burger King parking lot, he what? said, "I didn't do it, man." I it's a lot of people who really like that scene, but like I hate that scene. And the reason why I hate that scene is because I'm related to a lot of people who got busy in the streets, and that would have been me walking home eating chips. I wouldn't have been scratching a lotto though. I wouldn't have been scratching a lotto ticket. But that'd have been me walking home with a bag of chips and some homies pulling up on me because they know I'm related to such and such. But I don't know. I just guess I got to thank God. Just got to thank God because that never happened to me. Maybe I always kind of feared a situation like that. I grew up in a crazy place. But no, nah, I, I don't. That was a fear of me growing I was the athlete. I was the athlete. I ain't trying to get shot in the back with the shotty, bro. I felt it. I felt that scene. I ain't gonna front. I felt that scene. I felt that scene. Hey, yo. <laughs> I'm not one for free ads, but these Jordan Peterson series make you think. Um, no, nah, but like, no, I was the athlete. I was an athlete. I ain't want the shotty to the back. I ain't want that. I ain't do it. It wasn't even me. Killed that nigga anyway. Killed him anyway. All right. I was highly aware of stuff like that. My, my playground was different than your playground growing up. The, what they was talking about at the playgrounds I was at growing up, I didn't even. I would. I was one of them dudes that didn't even play right at, at the playground because it's talking about some real situations at the playground. I tell y'all all what the most gangster scene in Boys in the Hood that the late great John Singleton left us that we all miss. Right? The greatest scene, the most gangster scene in Boys in the Hood is when Trey said, let me out. Definitely. And Doughboy let him out. No, and Doughboy let him out. Let didn't him. argue with him. Listen, didn't tell him he was a mark. Didn't say he was a buster. Pulled over and let his homeboy out the car. And that's the problem in our society. Listen, I'm not even going to. I hope that I got enough memory on my phone to express this idea. I cannot tell you how many homies from all the hoods I'm dwelled in and walked through where my grandma stayed, where my cousin stayed, where my auntie stayed, where my cousin of a cousin stayed there, where somebody was like, yo, DJ, what you doing over here? Go home. What did you, what, what? Always had a good excuse because I was always going where I needed to be. As a child, I was a really good kid. I really like looking back. I do think I was a really good kid. I always try to be where I was supposed to be and do what I was supposed to do. Like, and say what I felt like I need to say. Stand up for people who was defenseless because I was strong. But, no, nah, I, mean, I had, I can't even name all of the, personal shout out to him. Shout out to OG Rock. I'm trying to get him, like, that ain't, I don't even know if he go by that. But, like, to me, he my OG. Uh, shout out to Pop. Shout out to Harlem. Shout out to C-Town. Oh, I got to start with my daddy friend. Shout out to my Uncle Boog. That's blood. Shout out to Dame. Shout out to my herb. Shout out my coaches, Mike's, both of them, Corey, Phil. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Coach Shorts. Shout out to... I can't even name these people's names because they was doing stuff. And they probably still doing stuff because they chose a life. But so many people... I remember one time I was leaving out of high school. Dude had, was having it out with his girlfriend. And I was at the bus stop with him and he was tripping. My, the homie that I knew, he was like one of my god brother's homies. He just happened to be at the bus stop with me that day. He had the strap in his hand. He was about to shoot the dude because he was acting irate. And he was acting irate, but I was like, oh, shit. I didn't think he was going to try to shoot him. I'm like, nah, bro. He just he just loves sick, bro. Don't even do it. That was one of the times I got to save one of the OGs. And that's what happened when the OGs look after you. You will get to reciprocate in a way where, like, that's it makes sense why they looking after you. That was a wild tangent, but, like, Boys in the Hood covered a lot of different aspects. They even had a Muslim dude. We ain't had no Muslims in my neighborhood. Cleveland, down the way, St. Clair, all the way up to 152nd. Like, I ain't seen no Muslim population. We got to let people out. Yeah, that's real. He let that man out. Man, that's the most gangstest thing that was done, but we missed that. You know what I'm saying? We want to take a nigga with us who don't want to go. Or we want to take a nigga with us who playing like he want to go. We, we were talking to uh, Terrence Gangster Williams. 
And he said, I'm going to make that the part one. That's long enough. I did want to get into like five more minutes of this. But, you know, we still early got a lot of more new subscribers. And I tell y'all, like, this is for me to help. I set, I set this channel up for me to help the young generation get to this family, get to this money, which or first, because I feel like they both can do it with each other so that we can live life and help the people we need to help. And, man, I grew up in a gangster-type culture, down the way, poverty, all that. And as much terrible I've seen, I've seen some beautiful, great righteousness, like some enduring-type crazy look. I've seen some wonderful blessings, people in the did for other people. And uh, this this interview actually inspired that last Facebook status of like me just thanking my OGs. I had to shout some of y'all out because... Where would I be without y'all? Y'all literally... I, listen, I can't even say what y'all all done did. Y'all done looked out, man. Love y'all.